All right, here we go. Chapter 31, 32, review. Let us start with Faraday's Law of Induction. Faraday's Law of Induction. Paterella, what is Faraday's Law of Induction? Faraday's law of induction. What does the E stand for, Vlad? The EMF. This is an induced EMF caused by a change in the magnetic flux. What is the equation for magnetic flux that we're going to put in right here, Mike? Magnetic flux. Sure, magnetic flux. I'll, I'll try this question. Magnetic flux. What about magnetic flux? Right. I need to know about it. <laughs> sure, the equation. Tell me anything. I'll take anything at this point. Integral B D A right here. What am I going to put instead? Message. B A cosine theta. B A cosine theta. Because really we want to talk about B A and cosine theta. So it's the derivative is how the magnetic field is changing, or the area of the loop, or the theta, the angle between the magnetic field and the area. We can figure out the direction of the induced EMF using what handy tool, class? The right-hand rule. The right-hand rule, we're not going to walk through it. We did, we've done plenty of that. But whenever you use the right-hand rule, make sure that you talk about the change in the flux and you identify the direction is determined by the right-hand rule and what, Zach? It's a term you've always got to use. Sure. This whole thing is called Faraday's law. This negative, specifically, is someone else's law. Lenz's law. Lenz's law. So notice it is Lenz's law, or the concept of electromagnetic inertia, that you need to spe specify when you talk about the EMF, the induced EMF, which is uh, resisting the change in the magnetic flux. Good. Motional EMF. What is the equation for motional EMF? Nitish. Uh, EMF is equal to the negative derivative of the magnetic flux. Ah, that's, we could use that to derive the motional EMF, but I'm looking for the equation uh, for motional EMF. Mr. P. Is equal to what? Uh, EMF. The EMF. I'm going to put delta V here. It's usually the electric potential difference. What is the V in this equation? Garrett, not the delta V, but the V. Which, which not the delta V, but the V. Is that the uh, speed? That is the velocity or the speed. So we have the electric potential difference equals the velocity times the magnetic field times the length of the item that is flying through some sort of magnetic field here. Uh, notice, you need to be able to derive this. And I would suggest also that you memorize it. It is, as far as um, multiple choice questions go, a useful thing to have uh, memorized. Notice, this assumes that the angle between um, the velocity and the magnetic field is 90 degrees. That is not necessarily the case 
um, the magnetic field equals Q V B sine theta. And there have been a couple of free response questions throughout the years where the, mag the angle is actually not um, 90 degrees for Q V B sine theta, which you use when deriving that. Generators. And motors, generators and motors. The EMF as a function of time. What is the equation for the EMF of a generator as a function of time? Please, Catherine Yang. Yeah. There is an easy way to remember it. Anybody remember? <laughs> WNBA. That would be the maximum EMF. What is the, what do we multiply this by in order to get the equation for the EMF as a function of time? Jake? The EMF as a function of time, Mr. Peter? You, generally, it's the sine of omega t, but it could be cosine, depending on what the initial condition is. So this is the equation for the EMF as a function of time. Remember, this included the fact that the uh, angular velocity is equal to the change in theta over change in time, when we assume theta initial equals zero and theta our time initial equals zero. Therefore, omega is equal to theta over t. So theta was equal to omega times t, which is where the omega t comes from in that equation. Again, this is one that you need to be able to derive and you should also memorize. Uh, back EMF. When we talk about back EMF, what sort of item are we talking about? Sierra, what item has back EMF? A motor has back EMF. When is the EMF of a motor, the back EMF of a motor, equal to zero? Hillary? Uh, at, the at the beginning. Why is it that the back EMF at the very beginning for a motor is equal to zero? Because there's another instance in, where, in which case it could be zero as well, but it is always, I'll say always, yes, at the beginning. Loki? Because there's no reduced current. No. It, Sure, but I understand why that is. Um, it's because it's not spinning, therefore there's no change in the magnetic flux, therefore there's no induced EMF, therefore there's no induced current, right? Going opposite the direction of the current going through the electric motor. So remember the back EMF, uh, I'll say rather than a startup, but when the motor isn't turning is equal to zero important thing to remember. All right. That's chapter 31. Chapter 32 uh, had the concept of inductance. Let's do, we'll add to our table of friends. Inductance. What is the symbol for inductance, please, Matt? Uh, no. Lowercase or capital? Yeah. Capital L. What are the dimensions for inductance? Um, dimensions for inductance, Bill? Henry's. Henry. Uh, we'll get the equation for uh, inductance before we get what Henry's are in other dimensions. Um, what is the equation we're going to use for uh, self-inductance here? The equation for self-inductance. Tyler? Uh, we'll equal P N something over L something. I'm sorry, there were a lot of somethings in there. <laughs> it's hard to follow. Try again. L. P 
So the EMF, the self-induced EMF is equal to the negative times the self-inductance times di dt. Remember, inductance, self-inductance is a resistance to a change in a current. So coming back to the, the dimensions for Henry's, we can rearrange the inductance here. We get L is equal to the EMF divided by di dt, the negative of and so what then are the dimensions for um, Henry's here? Look at that. Uh, yeah, but this is the derivative of current. Sure. What I'll do instead uh, is I'm going to put amps per second. It is in coulombs per second squared, but we usually would put it in amps per second. So inductance then would be in uh, volts times seconds over amps. So volts times seconds over amps. Uh, remember, we used uh, this equation right here um, and the uh, Faraday's law of induction to get to the equation where inductance, self-inductance is equal to n, the number of loops times the magnetic flux divided by the current. Again, this is one that you should memorize and be able to derive. We have the RL circuit. Again, an RL circuit worked very much like an RC circuit in that uh, we have a basic form for the current as a function of time equals the EMF over the resistance times one minus e to the negative t over uh, the time constant. I'll put the time constant there. What is the time constant for an RL circuit? Time constant for an RL circuit. Is it? It is not equal to negative r over l. It is just L over R, the time constant L over R. Uh, so again, with an RL circuit, you should be able to derive the equation. You should know, um, and you should know the limits at the beginning and the end for an uh, RL circuit. Where is the energy stored in an inductor? Where is the energy stored in an inductor? Bill? Energy stored in an inductor. Where? Um, in the magnetic field. So remember, the, the energy stored in the magnetic field, so in order to have energy stored in an inductor, you actually have to have current going through it. What is the equation for the energy stored in an inductor? Okay. Uh, I don't remember. There are a lot of I don't remembers today. Something tells me that we just had spring break. <laughs> I'm just going to remind you, we have a test on Friday, in case you forgot. The energy stored in an inductor, Travis? Um, one half. <laughs> Good place to start. Inductance uh, times current squared. L I squared. Good. The energy stored in an inductor. We also have an LC circuit we went through and talked about last time. It is basically simple harmonic motion. Uh, again, you need to, uh, you should. Memorize the, well, yeah, you should memorize the equations, I guess. Memorize. And be able to derive the equations for simple harmonic motion for an LC circuit. It's the same basic concept as simple harmonic motion um, with the concept of angular frequency. What is the angular frequency of an LC circuit? natural frequency of an LC circuit. Jenkins. I'll take it from anybody at this point. Winter. 1 over the square root of LC. 
1 over the square root of LC. Again, you can set that equal to the change in theta over change in time, which equals 2 pi divided by the period. You can solve for the period of LC circuit and so on and so forth.